Home sweet home or not. This is a competitive game which you can also play solitaire. It feels like it's mainly uh, a game for families, children. So it's a very simple game and you know the young players like competitive games and uh, it has this interesting idea that like many other modern games it is based on scenarios meaning that the game doesn't always play the same. You're gonna have a core of rules that apply to every game and then you play uh, different challenges in which the play area, which represents this house, is going to be configured differently. So different scenarios, you set up the house in different ways, will look different, and you're going to have slightly different components, different rules, and so on and so forth. And here I've set up the home for the holiday scenario for you. So, different missions, different things uh, to do, players will control characters represented by standees such as these and you start outside of the house and there's gonna be this black door there which is the entrance the entrance and then the other <coughs> rooms are connected uh, from these by these doors and in the scenarios you will get in the house and you will start interacting with those item cards that, that in order to achieve different goals now probably you see it already you see one of the things with the production that well, the production looks really good but uh, is not always very practical if you're picking up item cards in these large rooms no problem whatsoever but when it comes to these smaller rooms the doors literally pin them down so sometimes you have to move the door a little bit and to, to release the card as you can see the cards end up under the doors which again look great but you constantly have to do this kind of thing and uh, these walls here they don't they don't particularly trouble me but playing it with young players age 9 and 10 I saw that it was kind of troubling problematic for them to, to pick up cards on the small doors again and I think maybe this because of the or because of the walls they couldn't just you know grab them like this so these are considerations that uh, that I want to share with you that <laughs> the production looks very uh, very adorable but it has that element there so uh, there's gonna be a uh, item cards in the rooms and these cards have numbers that also may match they also will match the the rooms like five for five for example six six and then you have an item represented on it and you have a category like junk electronic fabric food books that sort of things and you also will have uh, different cards and different elements depending on the scenario for example again I set up the the, the house for the home for the holidays but I didn't use the all the cards that you would put in there and these are unique uh, cards that you use based on the scenario so the general idea still is the same regardless of the scenario players will alternate taking turns and at the beginning of a player's turn the player draws an event card and maybe nothing happens or maybe something happens sometimes it is bad sometimes it is good uh, and again a, there will be cards shuffled in here in specific ways in specific ways based on the scenario things that are bad for you things that are good for you you're looking for different things here the event deck is also your timer because uh, a common losing condition is if you if you run out of event cards and you have not completed the objectives of the scenario yet so the at player draws an event card and after resolving that the at player gets to take actions uh, you have three actions in a turn and for an action you can move into the house if you're outside or for an action you can move uh, into an adjacent room if you enter an area that has face down cards so those are revealed because you see them and so maybe spend one action there and another action there and I reveal those cards for an action you can also uh, interact with items you can interact with multiple items uh, all for one action as long as you're doing one thing only for each item for example this is the situation I could uh, pick up both of them as an action and I can put them in my inventory usually your inventory is of three items unless you find a backpack 
Uh, other things, again, for an action, as I said, I can do mm, things, and suppose that this is the situation. I can, for an action, I can do things with multiple items as long as it's only one per. Say, for example, for an action, I decide to pick up this book, and for an action, I decide to draw, and, and as part of the same action, I drop up this card there, and I had this card, and I give it to that player. Again, I could not pick up an item and give it to a player because it would be doing two things with a single item as a single action, but for an action, you can interact with a ton of cards that you have or you're in the room with as long as you do only one thing. After you have <clears throat> you have uh, performed your three actions, you get a free action, which is to give a card to somebody in the same room as you. And this is pretty much it. That's the, that's the idea. Uh, also, at uh, the end of a of your player's turn, if there are empty slots <clears throat> in rooms around the house, they are automatically refilled. If there are characters in the house, they are refilled face up. If there are characters in that room, if you are refilling a slot in a room without any characters, then it is refilled face down. You also have, I don't know if you can see them, hallways, and always have items at the beginning of the game. Have items at the beginning of the game that can be looked at and picked up as normal, but the hallways do not replenish automatically at the end of the turn the way that rooms do. The rooms just have an endless supply of, of stuff that just surfaces. So now, taking a closer look at the, at the scenarios, because that's, uh, that's what you're actually going to play, and so I'm also going to review the scenarios for you. So, Home for the Holidays. Home for the Holidays is possibly my favorite scenario. The guests are coming out of the event deck, and you need to clean up the house. So in order to win, you need to pick up a number of items in the rooms and put them away. While at the same time, you need to entertain the guests. And to entertain them, you need to give them an item that they like. For example, these people, for some reason, they really like to look at junk. Uh, other people like food or fabric. So... They're running around and, uh, again, trying to put away cards while at the same time making sure you don't have too many bored guests. Bored, they're bored if they're not entertained by the item they like. So it's a really neat little scenario. It's great to start and actually after playing all the scenarios, I think that's the one that was the most successful. This one also very successful with my... With, my, with the players that I played that with, uh, incidentally, again, a 9-year-old and a 10-year-old, Rest of spirits, uh, you are going to have to destroy these ghosts and monsters that show up from the event deck. In order to do so, you need to combine items uh, and sometimes, again, in wacky, weird things such as the book flail. I think that weapon should exist and other fun things. And hey, everybody loves, loves to put together a book, fa book flail <laughs> and use it to destroy a monster that just showed up. Alien in the house. Uh, successful because I modified it and because I cheated when I played with, with the young players. Again, I cheated so that they could have a good experience. Because the idea is that there will be cards coming out of the event deck that will abduct the the players and the the player, the abducted players. Technically, they are not out of the game. They have different actions, but these actions are not nearly as compelling as going around the house and doing things and stuff, stuff such as you know, uh, flipping cards face up. So I just told them that uh, when somebody got abducted, it was going to be me, and I was the only abducted player. Uh, and that's it. And the kids liked it. Another important thing is that you can look at the top card of the deck. And you can then put the card back on top of the deck or shuffle it back into the deck, which seems like a good action. Oh, we really don't want to shuffle it back there. But the problem is that the way that the deck is prepared at the beginning of the game, you shuffle the event deck and you deal the cards into an equal number of piles. And you shuffle an adaption card into each so that you're sure they're not on top. Uh, if you ever take this action here, then the, the setup is completely meaningless and the player and the game becomes completely random because players may lose right away because the abduction cards ended up on top. So uh, that's probably not a good idea. 
but uh, what I did is simply again I modified it that if I didn't like it I could put it at the bottom as the at the bottom of the card instead of shuffling in. Egg hunt, uh, not the most successful. You're just trying to collect a lot of eggs, and so it becomes a little bit repetitive that way. Some players may find an egg basket. It's completely random. You need to find your own to be able to use it. And some of my young players could not find their own. And although they were doing well in the game, they didn't enjoy the experience of it. Like, why does my cousin have an egg basket and I don't? I'm like, I don't know. I don't. Maybe they didn't play test it with actual children and see how that felt. Santa's Little Helpers, really good one. One of the favorite, again, for with my group. Uh, you are trying to collect uh, items uh, to, to help Santa. So you collect items from around the house, you bring them to the to the uh, bedroom where you wrap them and then you bring them to the garage so then Santa can come and pick them up. Nice, perfect balance between, again, different things that you're trying to do around the board. Cooperation, hey, bring me the item, I wrap it up here, then you come and bring it to the garage. Just fun. So, um, what do we have here? However, however, there is one, uh, yeah, there's one little adjustment that we have to make here because to do that you need to fulfill wish list and again, the deck is set up so that, you know, you shuffle a wish list in a section, a wish list in another, and so on and so forth. The problem is that the one that is shuffled at the very in the bottom part of the deck may be the very last card in the game. And if that is the case, the game is unwinnable because the last player finds a wish list, the last card, and they can't possibly fulfill it. So the way we did it, we, we divided the, 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 the event deck into a number of piles with an extra, an extra mini pad at the bottom that did not have a wish list to make sure that at the end we would have a chance of fulfilling the wish list. So, overall, it's a fun game to play with kids and list some of the scenarios. As you see, probably you may want to use some of your gamer knowledge and place and put in place a couple of tweaks to make the game work better, especially with young players. There are just a couple of things in those scenarios, again, that as I just told you, um, as I just told you, they, they may they may need a little bit of, of retooling. But overall, as a game to play with families, a game to play with young friends, it it was fun. I mean, again, I had uh, my niece, who is nine, uh, visiting for uh, Thanksgiving break, and then my 10-year-old kid were playing together. And despite, again, the annoyance of these rooms being kind of like too small for the cards uh, to be moved in and out of easily. Uh, they were having a good time. They kept asking, hey, can we play another scenario? Can we play more? Can we replay? Uh, can we replay this or that? Not all scenarios were super successful, some better than others, but you got multiple scenarios. And I think, uh, again, just looking at my constituents, they liked the game a lot. They wanted to play some scenarios rather than others, but they wanted to play the game overall. So, as a family copy game, this is one that worked, despite, again, a couple of little negatives here and there. Uh, probably too light and too straightforward to be a game to be played copy or game night. Again, unless you have friends that are really casual players that are coming over. So, overall, a good family game and one that works, you know, when young relatives are visiting. Definitely that is how I played it and it worked pretty well that way.